Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. The purpose of this video is to go through six different random examples. These are higher level examples of laws of exponents in action. So these will go into much more detail than the examples I gave in the initial rule videos. So we'll just walk through them one by one, step by step. In this problem, I notice I have a set of parentheses with an exponent of four outside of it. So that means everything within these parentheses is brought to the power of four. I want to eliminate this exponent on the outside first. Some people would tell you simplify the center first and then worry about the outside exponent. Uh, this is how I choose to do it in this video. So we're going to distribute this four throughout the whole problem. I've got this x to the seventh brought to the power of four. Power to power means I multiply. So 7 times 4 is actually x to the 28th. Distribute the 4 to the y as well. y to the 3rd brought to the power of 4. Power to power means I multiply y to the 12th. And I'm also going to distribute this 4 to the bottom as well because it has to go to every single part of this problem. So y to the 2nd, y squared brought to the power of 4. 2 times 4 is 8. And then I've got y to the understood first brought to the power of 4. 4 times 1 is 4. So now that I've gotten rid of the outside parentheses and that x outside exponent, I can go ahead and divide now and simplify what I have in my fraction. So I've got x to the 28th divided by x to the 8th. Remember when we divide exponents, we subtract them. 28 minus 8 would be x to the 20th. Then I've got y to the 12th divided by y to the 4th. So 12 minus 4 would be y to the 8th. Okay, so now we've got a problem that looks pretty similar to the last one we solved, although this time we've got whole numbers brought in there. Again, there's more than one right way to solve this problem, but I'm going to show you a very consistent way throughout this whole process. So we've got a fraction with parentheses around it, just like the last one, and we've got a power on the outside of these parentheses, which means everything within is being brought to the power of three. Remembering that rule number four, power to power rule, we want to distribute this three to every single part of this problem, including this whole number. Remember that eight has an understood exponent of one. If there's not an exponent there, it's a one. So three times one is gonna give us eight to the third power. We'll worry about simplifying that in just a minute. We'll continue distributing this three. M to the fifth brought to the power of three. Five times three is 15. Distribute this 3 to the n. n to the 7th brought to the power of 3. 7 times 3 is 21. Okay, now just like in the last problem, we need to do the same thing with the bottom as well. So I'm going to distribute this 3 first to the 2. Remember that 2 has an understood power of 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. Distribute this 3 to the m. Remember that m, there's no exponent there, so it's got an understood of 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. And lastly, distribute it to this n to the 5th. 5 times 3 is 15. So now that we've gotten that parentheses with the 3 out of the way, we can go ahead and simplify what we have here. So I'm going to start by simplifying this 8 to the 3rd power and also this 2 to the 3rd power. Let's go ahead and, and simplify that and then we'll worry about our exponents. So 8 to the 3rd, that would be 8 times 8 times 8, 512. And then we have our m to the 15th and n to the 21st. Okay, now let's simplify our 2 cubed. Um, that one's a little simpler. Simplifies to 8. Then we have our m to the 3rd, n to the 15th. Okay, now can we simplify 512 divided by 8 anymore? That's definitely a high number, something you'd want to check on your calculator, but we actually can. 512 over 8 simplifies to 64. So we write that up top. 
Then we have our m to the 15th divided by m to the 3. Remember, our final rule dividing exponents is that we subtract the exponents. So 5 minus 3 is actually going to be m to the 12th. And then n to the 21st divided by n to the 15th, 21 minus 15 would be n to the 6th. So I can't break this down any further. That's as low as it can go. So again, took a very complicated problem and actually made it pretty simple. In this next example, it looks a whole lot different from the first two, but this is really testing our multiplying, our product rule, and also our power to power rule and knowing when to do each. So again, I told you guys I was gonna be very consistent the way I solved these. I'm gonna start by getting rid of these outside exponents, so the four and the two. I see that everything within this set of exponents is brought to the power of four. Um, so therefore, I want to distribute this four to everything inside the parentheses. And so since this is a power being brought to another power, we multiply. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Four and three would be 12. And then let's look at our b. Remember that our b has that understood exponent of 1 if it's not already there. 1 times 4 is 4. Okay, so we simplified the first. Now let's simplify the second section. So I've got an a to the understood 1. Power brought to another power. Remember, there's so much power we have to multiply. So a to the second. b to the sixth brought to the power of 2. 6 times 2 is 12. These are being multiplied, so I need to take this a little further. Now it's going to test my product rule knowledge. So I want to combine like terms through multiplying, and when I multiply straight across, remember that I add my exponents. Um, so a to the 12th times a to the second. Notice I'm combining those two because they're like terms. They're both a. Um, so 12 plus 2 is going to be 14. And then I've got b to the 4th times b to the 12th. 4 plus 12 is going to be 16. Okay, so this problem, number 4, looks pretty similar to the last one, although you'll notice we have a whole lot of negative exponents going on here. Your gut instinct is probably to go ahead, let's cross the line, change the sign, and fix some of this. I'm going to suggest that we start by just getting rid of these outside exponents just like we did the last time. If at the end we have any negative exponents, we'll deal with that and we'll cross the line, change the sign. But to try to cross the line, change the sign right now, in my opinion, overcomplicates it. So we're gonna just keep going at the end. We need to, we will. So we're gonna solve this the same way we did the last time. Everything within these parentheses is brought to the power of negative two. That's okay, we still distribute it throughout the whole problem. Okay, so b to the negative third brought to the power of negative two, power to a power, we multiply. It's okay that these are negative. Negative three times negative two is actually positive six. So that works in our favor. c to the negative seventh brought to the power of negative two, negative times a negative, again, is a positive. Seven times two is 14. All right, so we've simplified our first section. Let's look at the second section. So I need to distribute this negative three throughout this side as well. B to the third brought to the power of three. This time it's a positive three times a negative three. So it's actually gonna be a negative nine. That's okay, we'll deal with that. C to the negative two brought to the power of negative three. Negative times a negative is a positive six. So I know I need to multiply. So b to the 6 times b to the negative ninth. Remember when we're just straight multiplying across, we add our exponents. 6 plus negative 9 is actually negative 3. We've got to be real careful with our signs there. c to the 14th times c to the 6. 14 plus 6 is positive 20. Okay, so I know we're all freaking out because we can't have this negative exponent. That's okay. Remember, we want to cross the line, change the sign. I've done everything else I can do. Now I'll worry about that negative exponent. So right now, this b to the negative 3 is on top. There's an understood over 1 here. So we want to move it to the bottom. 
so b to the positive 3. My c to the 20th has a positive exponent. It can stay right where it is, c to the 20th. So this would be our final answer. For this problem, I noticed that there's a set of parentheses and everything contained within the parentheses is brought to the power of 3. So I've got to distribute this power of 3 throughout the whole problem. Remember that 6 has an understood exponent of 1. Power to power, so we multiply our powers. 1 times 3 is 3. Continuing on, x to the 7th, 7 times 3 is 21. y to the negative 3 times 3 would be negative 9. Now we also need to distribute and we did there. We also need to distribute this 3 uh, to everything on the bottom as well. So we'll start all the way over here with this x to the fifth. So x to the fifth brought to the power of 3 is x to the 15th. y to the negative 2 brought to the power of 3 is negative 6. Continuing that, 3 to the power of 1 brought to the power of 3 is 3 cubed. 3 brought to this x, which also has an ex understood exponent of 1. 1 times 3 is 3. And then y cubed brought to the power of 3 would be y to the 9th. So now that we've gotten rid of that outside parenthesis and that outside exponent, we can go ahead and I'm actually going to multiply these two together before I start dividing. So I have an understood 1 in front of that x. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my 6 cubed x to the 21 y to the negative 9th on top because I'm not doing anything with that yet. Um, 1 times 3 cubed. So 3 cubed is actually 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So 1 times 27 is 27. I've got my x to the 15th being multiplied by my x to the 3rd. 15 plus 3, remember that product rule, would be x to the 18th. y to the negative 6 times y to the 9th. So negative 6 plus 9 is going to be positive 3. And next I'm going to go ahead and divide, and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this simplifying that 6 cubed. Um, 6 cubed is 216, x to the 21st, y to the negative 9th, over 27, x to the 18th, y to the 3rd. I'm going to go ahead and divide my whole numbers. 216 divided by 27 is 8 x to the 21st divided by x to the 18th. Remember when we're dividing with exponents, we subtract. So 21 minus 18 is three. y to the negative nine over y to the third. Negative nine minus three is actually negative 12. And so my last step, remember that we can't leave a negative exponent in our final answer. So my final step is going to be rewriting this, but I need to cross the line, change the sign with my y. So I'm going to rewrite my final answer down here. 8x cubed over y to the positive 12th. Cross the line, change the sign. So this is my last example that we're going to look at for this video. You'll notice that we don't have any outside parentheses brought to powers. So we don't have any power to power rules going on here, but we do have some negative numbers I see. We've, we're multiplying on the top here. So we're going to take it just one step at a time. I'm going to start by simplifying this top. So you'll notice right here I've got A and B but right here I've got b and c, so I've got to be real careful what I'm combining. So let's start with our whole numbers. 2 times 6 is 12. a to the negative third. There are no a's over here that I can combine it with, so that's okay. It just stays a to the negative third. I just can't combine it with anything. Next I've got b to the understood first being multiplied by b to the fifth. So the, there are some like terms there that we can combine. So 1 plus 5, remember we're multiplying straight across. So with my product rule, 1 plus 5 is 6. I see I've got a c over here, no c here to combine it with. That's okay. We'll just leave it as c to the negative 7th. On my bottom, there's nothing to combine there, nothing to multiply. So I'll just leave it for right now as, oops, 4c to the negative 9th. 
Okay, so now I want to divide and see what I can combine here. So 12 divided by 4, that does come out as a whole number, comes out as 3. And I'm going to put my 3 up top. I've got a to the negative 3 um, and no a down here to combine it with. So I'm just going to leave that as a to the negative 3. We'll deal with that negative exponent last. Next I've got b to the 6, nothing to combine it with down here. So I'll just leave it as b to the 6. Lastly I've got c to the negative 7th and I do have a c here that I can combine it with. So remember when we're dividing with exponents we subtract. So negative 7 minus negative 9. Now you notice here that I've got c to the negative 7th divided by c to the negative 9th. When I have two like terms and I'm dividing, I subtract my exponents. We gotta be really careful here because this is negative 7 minus negative 9. And it's important to remember that anytime we have two negatives, so minus a negative actually becomes a positive. So this is actually negative 7 plus 9. And it ends up being c to the second power. Okay, so I'm almost done. I've almost got a perfect answer except for this a to the negative 3. I cannot leave a negative in my answer. So I want to go ahead, leave everything else up top because they're all positive. So 3 b to the 6, c to the second, all that will stay up top. Just the a to the negative 3. That's all I'm going to drop down. So I cross the line, change the sign. So that's now a positive 3. And there's no simplifying I can do here. That's as far as I can take the problem. So this is Miss Smith's math tutorials. We walked through six different kind of higher level examples of laws of exponents. So hopefully you feel a little bit more prepared to work on your homework and for your test. Thank you.